In this video, I am going to be installing Kali Linux in a desktop computer. This is the Kali website, and I'm going to be downloading the latest version of Kali Linux. So I'll click on download. So there's 64 bit, 32 bit, and for Apple Silicon. I'll click on the installer because this is recommended. So it's downloading, it's about 3.8 gigabytes in size. So on the website, there's a lot of information. You can click on the blog and this is the latest version, 2024.1. This is the 2024 team refresh. So I'm going to be using Rufus to create a bootable USB drive. This is the Rufus website. I am going to download the Rufus EXE file and this is going to create the bootable USB drive with Kali Linux. So I have the Rufus EXE file on my desktop and I have the Kali Linux ISO file. I'm going to open Rufus. So I'm using a 16 gigabyte USB drive. I'll click select. I'll select the Kali Linux ISO file. I'll click open. So I'm going to leave everything as default. I'll click start, click OK, click OK again, and the bootable drive is being created. OK, so the USB drive was created. So now I'm going to take this USB drive and boot up the desktop computer. So this is the BIOS of the desktop computer that I am installing Kali Linux in. And this desktop is connected to the internet via Ethernet cable. So I want to make sure that Secure Boot is disabled and this is only temporary. After installation of Kali Linux, you can enable Secure Boot. So right now it's disabled. So I'm going to restart the computer and boot from the USB drive. So this is the boot menu. I am going to select the USB drive to boot up from. So I'm going to use the graphical install. I'll select the first option, hit enter. So here is where you select a language. The default is English. I'm going to select English. You can choose whatever language you would like. I'll click continue. Here you have to select your location. So I'm in the United States. I will leave it selected. Click continue. So here is where you configure your keyboard language. So I'm going to leave it as American English. Click on continue. So here is where you configure the network. So we detected that the system has multiple network interfaces. Choose the one to use as a primary network interface. So this is the primary network interface. The first option, I click continue. Okay, here it says, please enter the host name for this system. And you can leave it as Kali or you can change the name. I'm gonna type Kali-desktop. Click continue. So under configure the network, if you want to join this computer to a domain, you can type it in here. I'm not joining this computer to a domain. It's just a standalone computer. I'll click continue. So here is where you set up users and password. So it says a user account will be created for you to use instead of the root account for non-administrative activity. So you want to enter a username. I'm going to type John. Click continue. I have to type in a password. I have to retype the password. Click continue. So on this page, I have to configure the clock. And here's where I select my time zone. So if your time zone is not listed here, then you have to go back and choose a language and then select the country that uses the desired time zone. So I'm in Eastern time zone. It's New York time. I'll click continue. I was detecting the disk. So here's where you have to partition your disk if you would like to and you can make a selection here. So I'm going to be using the entire disk in this desktop computer. So I'll be selecting guided use entire disk. There's also guided use entire disk and set up LVM, guided use the entire disk and set up encrypted LVM, or you can select manual. 
So I'll select guided, use entire disk, click continue. So if you have more than one hard drive in a computer, it's going to be listed here. And then you have to select the drive that you would like to install Kali Linux in. So as you can see, I have the hard drive listed and this is the USB drive. So the size of the hard drive that I am installing Kali Linux in is 256 gigabytes. So it's selected, I'll click continue. So here is where you have to select your partition. And here are some options. All files in one partition, recommended for new users, separate home partition or separate home VA and temp partitions. I'm going to leave it as the first option, all files in one partition. I'll click continue. So this is an overview of the configured partitions and mount points. If you want to modify it, you just have to select a partition and you can modify its settings. So I'm not going to modify any settings here. I'm just going to select finish partitioning and write changes to this. Click continue. So it says here, if you continue the changes listed below will be written to the disk. Otherwise, you will be able to make further changes manually. So it also gives a warning. This will destroy all data on any partitions you have removed, as well as on the partitions that are going to be formatted. So I'm going to select yes. Click continue. So it's installing the base system. Okay, this is the software selection page. It says at the moment, only the core of the system is installed. The default selections below will install Kali Linux with its standard desktop environment and the default tools. You can customize it by choosing a different desktop environment or a different collection of tools. So I'm going to select no. I'm going to leave the rest selected. Click continue. So on the select and install software, I get an error message. An installation step failed. And the failing step is select and install software. So to fix this problem, I'll click continue. You want to make sure select and install software is selected. Click continue. On the software selection, I'm going to uncheck XFCE, select no. And I'm going to uncheck these two last options, top 10 and the default recommended tools. This can always be installed after installation. And this is what's causing the error message. So I'm going to click continue. And as you can see, installation is progressing. Okay, it's installing the drop bootloader. So it's finishing the installation. Okay, installation is complete. I have to remove the USB drive and reboot the computer. So I'll click continue. So I'm going to log in. So login was successful. So on the top right side, there's the wired, there's the power settings, there's also the volume control. So on the left side, this is the applications menu. So 
So I'm going to open the terminal app. And I'm going to type sudo apt update. I'll enter the password. So this is if you want to get the latest update. And I'm going to type sudo app upgrade. I'm going to type Y for yes. So also you can go to Kali's website and there's a lot of information and you can read about the meta packages and you can download tools. So in this video, I installed Kali Linux in a desktop computer and the installation was successful. So I want to thank you for watching and I thank you for subscribing.